third, prophets did a lot more speaking to the people in their own day than predicting the future. And this is confusing. We've already been learning this, though. When we do our Bible studies, we need to know when it was happening, right? Because we need to know how that all fits together. When the prophets spoke, they were speaking to the people who were alive, hearing their words. That's what prophets did. Sometimes they did speak to the future for sure, but most of the time they spoke to the present day of their lives. And you saw this in your Bible study where the prophet's messages were really about how Hebrews were living at the time and how they were supposed to live. The main part of the Bible is story. The people the prophet spoke to, they were a part of the story. Isn't that interesting? They're in the story. They are the story. It was happening all around them. So the prophets told people what they were supposed to do right then, where they were as these things were happening. What the prophets said to those people is commentary on the story, like television commentators describing a cricket game. What's important? You're watching television and you're watching a cricket game and you see the people doing what they're doing, playing cricket. But then you're listening to commentators, two or three people talking about what's happening. What's more important? What they say or what's happening? Well, obviously what's happening is the real heart of it. What they say helps us to understand it. It adds to it, it explains it. The story's the ball game or the cricket game is the ball game. And in the Bible, the story is the ball game. Without the game, the commentary would be meaningless. In a real way, the prophets often talked about politics. They told kings, they told leaders to stop trusting in armies and human strength. Judah and Israel were constantly making treaties with kings from other countries. The prophets almost always condemned this. Why? Because the Lord was enough for all of Israel and Judah's defenses. I mean, all they had to do was turn to the Lord and the Lord would do whatever he was going to do. Instead, they fell into the trap of trusting in human power rather than God's power. Even good kings did this. Even good kings fell into the trap of trusting human power rather than God's power. But whether that king was good or bad, it doesn't make any difference. God's prophets spoke to them to call them to repent. God sent prophets to remind Israel and Judah about God's covenant. Okay, what is a covenant? A covenant is a contract between a great power and a lesser power. Now, in the Bible, when you have a covenant, God's the great power. The Hebrews were the little power. So there are different kinds of covenants in the Old Testament. But the prophets were dealing especially with the covenant which God made when he gave the Hebrews the Ten Commandments in Exodus. This happened after the Hebrews escaped from Egypt, but before they came into the Promised Land. So the question is, why did God make a covenant with the Hebrews? Well, God was about to give the Hebrews the Promised Land of, of Canaan, but he had to make a covenant with them, a contract, because they could only stay in the land if they obeyed the Lord. And God gave them the law as the way they would obey the Lord. He wanted to bless the Hebrews. The only place the Hebrews could receive this blessing was in the land. If they were not in the land, God would not bless them. In order to stay in the land, they had to obey God's law. Remember, that's the contract. That's the contract. God's law did not offer eternal life. A lot of people get confused about that. A lot of people think, oh, well, you know, I, I can get eternal life, or the Jews wanted to get eternal life in obedience to the law. If they did that, they were using the law, as Paul would say, in an unlawful way, because the purpose of the law was not to give eternal life. The purpose of the law was to give the 
requirements that God had. You guys want blessing? You have to be in the land. You want to stay in the land? You're going to have to be the law because the law is like the contract. This is what you guys are going to do to stay in the land. Not about eternal life. The law was never made to bring people eternal life. The laws were explaining what God expected the Hebrews to do so they could stay in the land of blessing. So the prophets are kind of like lawyers. It's sort of like just a big corporation or a very rich person, a landowner like, and he has lawyers and he sends the lawyers to talk to people, don't break your contract. And it's sort of like the lawyers remind the people about the contract requirements. They remind the people about penalties for breaking the contract. So, wow. So that's interesting, isn't it? That means that we realize that these prophets ministry was to say, here's the contract that you have with God. You can receive blessing, but you have to actually obey the terms of the contract to stay in the promised land.